Hi, this is Stephanie Miller from The Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this exclusive clip from my show on Political Voices Network. It's interesting that the God Bless the USA Bible might have actually been too much for some <laughs> former Trump voters. Like one of them cited it as, all right, I'm out. You know, I mean, him literally comparing himself to, to Jesus. Mm-hmm. And, He's you know, jealous. He, Donald Trump's yes. jealous of Jesus. Yes. He's jealous of Jesus. <laughs> Um, so this is a, this is a voter, a Florida voter, Joanna, in uh, your, your state of Florida. Hi, my name is Joanna. I live in Florida. Donald Trump kind of had this, like, let's get to work, let's get things going again kind of attitude. So, yeah, that really cemented my decision that Donald Trump was the right choice for 2016. I'm a veteran. I served eight years in the Navy. And when I'm looking at somebody wanting to be the president, I want somebody who still can bow their head to God. Yeah, I. so she's... <laughs> And, Come to the light yeah. about about uh, Donald Trump. I just love that Trump wanted to get to work, who spent half the day, you know, watching TV and the other half in a golf cart. But OK. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, I guess, David, who cares how people finally, you know, uh, see Trump for who he is, you know, and it, obviously Joe Biden is the, the actual religious man. Right. That's right. That's right. And and listen, you know, I I use this term Haley voter. We've got to come up with another one. But it's a contemporary term to tell you there are these soft Republican, independent, persuadable voters that are available to Joe Biden. And so what pushes them in the direction of deciding this election? Look, for some, they'll go back to Trump for tax policy. We know that or they'll go on immigration policy, whatever it might be. But a, a high percentage of those people might be exactly like that caller who said in 16, I needed somebody to break the system, but I never trusted Donald Trump could fix it. Well, guess what? It's pretty well broken now. Joe Biden's been mending it back together. The idea of going back to, you know, Brutus in the in the China shop and Donald Trump to break things again doesn't make any sense to that caller. And I don't think it makes any sense to most of the Haley voters either. Yeah. You know, David, she mentioned being a veteran, and I've been mentioning that we finally um, are getting dates from Arlington to inter my mom with my dad. Um, and, you know, my dad, former Republican congressman, that that's what triggers my daddy issues with right. you. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, uh, ran with Barry Goldwater in 64, and I, I, I just... Again, I can, I'm trying to get my mind around any veteran, you know, voting for him that knows that he's called them suckers and losers. And I, I mean, I, my skin just crawls whenever I hear like Trump might get buried at Arlington. <laughs> like, I, I would like to say over my dead body. <laughs> but, yeah. but, but the the America First nationalist proclamations feed into kind of this you know, this visceral masculine strength of the country, whatever it might be. I would suggest, though, that Donald Trump and Republicanism today is a representation of American weakness. And I don't even mean that when it comes to his willingness to undermine our own democratic institutions and pillory the Constitution. I mean it because he's projecting on the world stage weakness. When you bow to Putin, when you give equity and credence to an axis of, of world powers that want to to confront the United States' interest in the West. You know, that abandons this position of American strength that we've seen for generations and that Republicans like to assign to Ronald Reagan. Part of Ronald Reagan's ethos and Republicanism for the past 40 years was that America is so strong we can take on any enemy. Now Republicanism says, let's just give the world to Vladimir Putin. Yeah, it's American weakness, and it's a charade. What Donald Trump is selling veterans right now. We mentioned the New York Times piece about you know Chinese and Russian, uh, um, uh, the R- Chinese and Russians are getting involved in pro-Trump you know social media sites and all yeah. of that. Yeah. That they you know they both obviously want Trump back because it hurts America, <laughs> and it weakens uh, us on the world stage and everything you just said. And I just you know should yes. be a little tip off for you when America's enemies really want someone to be president, uh, that should be the guy you vote against, right? Uh, look, Donald Trump's for sale. What they know is if we can provide for Donald Trump's personal economic interests, for Trump enterprises, properties, investments around the globe, bail him out when he needs money the most, Donald Trump as president of the United States will give these these nation states what they want. We saw it with Turkey when he said, when Turkey said, hey, Donald Trump, I know you've had an alliance with the Kurds now going back 25 years. We're going to go, you know, basically commit genocide on a specific Kurdish population and you're going to look the other way. And he said, yeah. okay. Yeah. In the Middle East, what he did with Saudi Arabia, overriding the veto, a two-thirds veto of Congress, 
to actually provide arms that were not in the, the interest of the U.S. He did that because he has a financial interest. It's clear yeah. he does. He's yeah. for sale. Donald Trump's for sale. So I don't know if you saw the latest polling that Colin Allred has pulled uh, uh, even with Ted Cruz in Texas. We just had uh, Debbie uh, Marcus. McCarcel yeah, yeah, Powell. Yeah, Mar- McCarcel. <laughs> McCarcel. Uh, yes. Powell. Debbie for Florida. Yeah. <laughs> you can uh, jump to Powell. Debbie Powell. Debbie Powell. Powell. There you go. Debbie for Florida. Yes. We just had her on last week. She's fantastic. Yeah. Um, you know, and she just, uh, I just got an email from her. She said, Florida Supreme uh, Court uh, rules to keep yeah. abortion rights on the ballot this November, giving voters a chance to overturn the GOP's extreme new six-week abortion ban. Um, what so... First of all, I don't understand Rick Scott. <laughs> I don't understand the yeah. whole how he's ever gotten elected, the whole Medicare fraud that you know, uh, I thing. To, uh, anyway, talk talk about that race a little bit in Florida in general. Sure. Listen, big big news for Florida Democrats and Debbie Powell. Really, I, I really mean this. Um, so Rick Scott, go back two years. Ron DeSantis wins by 19 points. There's an open question: Has Florida gone away from Democrats for good. Yeah. This ba- this cycle, though, will tell us that because Rick Scott has never won by more than one point. So do we see a Rick Scott win by eight points? And the answer is yes, it's a red state. Do we see it return to the mean, to one to two points? If so, then Florida Democrats can play in, in this cycle and in future cycles. And here's why yesterday's decision really helps this. So. Ron DeSantis passed a 15-week ban early on in his administration. And when he decided to run for president, he was getting dinged that that wasn't aggressive enough. So he runs back to Tallahassee from Iowa and signs a six-week ban. He gets challenged in court. Yesterday, the Florida Supreme Court upheld the six-week ban. But the Florida Supreme Court did something else yesterday. They approved for this November's ballot a constitutional amendment that is very clear. It says no law in the state of Florida can uh, prohibit a woman from abortion services up until the point of viability or if the health of the mother is in danger as determined by her physician. That's it. That is the, the language we have seen influence races throughout the country since the Dobbs decision. These voters that don't poll, that we don't know they're going to show up, and all of a sudden on election night they show up and they vote for reproductive freedom, but they also vote for Democrats. Debbie Powell yesterday had her race changed dramatically. She is yeah. absolutely competitive awesome. against Rick Scott wow. in November. Wow, that's fantastic. I mean, you know, when a woman wins by 25 points in Alabama, yeah. I, I, I think that's we right. keep saying, I don't think people realize what's coming in November. That, uh, As right. you probably know, because you have a wife, women don't get over anything ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say that about my five-year-old daughter. (laughs) (laughs) Now, uh, when you're governor and you announce that on the Stephanie Miller show, you will enshrine women's rights, won't you, in the Florida state? Yeah. Well, I think it could pass. Look, Florida has a 60% threshold. It might already be in the Constitution. But let's talk about that possibility, whether it's me or somebody else, because this is why this cycle and this issue matters so much. So in 24, as I described, we will see how this state performs with abortion on the ballot and against Rick Scott. Why that matters is there's a governor's race and four other statewide races in Florida in 26. It's an open seat for the governorship. If Debbie Powell pulls this out or even gets very close to Rick Scott, people like me and a lot of others will look at 26 and say, Florida is now competitive and we can bring it back from Republicans. Do it, Florida, do it. Uh, obviously, the right wing lost its mind because Trans Visibility Day <laughs> happened to fall on Easter and, you know, accused President Biden of uh, disrespecting God or whatever. So talk to us about that and what it's like taking all these, like, you know, slings and arrows on social media all the time. Yeah, look, I, what I anticipated to be a slower media weekend with some of my work with NBC and MSNBC turned out not to be. I mean, yeah. I really stepped into the fire and struck a nerve defending uh, Joe Biden's relatively routine, honestly, from the White House recognition of Trans Visibility Day. But the right decided to make it their latest culture war. And I think it just has to be hit head on on several fronts. Um, First, theologically and doctrinally, I think the right is wrong when it comes to biblical theology. I think they're a long ways from what would Jesus do, the bracelets they used to wear. The reality is Jesus is a loving God who would support the trans community and and be proud of their bravery and the struggle that they have gone through for recognition and equity. I think it's politically stupid because they're reminding voters that they're really about 
marginalizing already marginalized communities. I think it's morally offensive because they manufactured this issue. This was not something that Biden created on Easter Sunday. But here's the bottom line. And, and I know these cultural conversations around transgenderism, they're, they're relatively new, right, in yeah. terms of the push for social justice. They, they're, they're still kind of figuring out the rules of the road. But here's the bottom line. And this is where what the right did becomes so glaringly painful. We know, you can immediately see, people who are trying to work in good faith towards greater inclusivity, greater equity, greater equality for all marginalized communities, including the trans community, and you can spot the bad faith actors. Yeah. And what we saw in Newt Gingrich and Marsha Blackburn and Mike Johnson and Donald Trump and the, the right writ large this weekend were a bunch of bad faith actors spewing bullcrap to the American people, and it's time to call it out. And yeah. Yeah, look, the blowback, I, I just received an email, I told you, calling me demonic for siding with transgender activists or transgender yeah. activists this weekend. And, you know, David, it's been a second since Catholic school, but uh, isn't the whole point of Easter, Jesus died for all our sins, <laughs> <laughs> exclusive, you know, and inclusivity? I mean, it's just as if he rolled the stone away and said, but not you trannies. Like, I, I don't understand yeah. what the right wing, you know, where all this just hatred and meanness comes I from. I know. Stephanie, can we go just a little deep on this one? Because yeah. I think second degree analysis on this issue is really important because, yes, they're, they're, most deities, whatever your fate, the fundamental principle is love, right? A, a deity, a God who loves you, loves people, yeah. wants to provide for you and, and your eternal life. So that is true of the Christian faith as well. This notion, though, that this argument around transgenderism and whether or not to be inclusive or not, I think the second degree analysis becomes powerful because the right is engaging in, in calling out sin, right? They're actually suggesting that someone's sexual affiliation, sexual identity, uh, that somehow they get to be the judge of whether or not it is proper and prudent and biblical. That in itself, I think we have to call out as well. Who is one person to call out another person's sexual yeah. orientation or sexual identity? It's flat wrong. Yeah. And, and but look, let, let's take Someone... it straight to politics. The 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 Haley voter, the mythical Haley voter, that six percent of the country that's trying to decide if if Donald Trump is still too much. This reminds them that Donald Trump is too much. They don't like the yeah. hatred and the vitriol coming from the right. Well, I love that you know somebody tweeted that get your theology out of women's biology. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know that your religion <laughs> tells you what to do. It shouldn't tell me what to do. 